Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. EJ agrees to help Eric get vengeance, and Johnny and Chanel get some drink tidings from someone new. In moments Days of Our Lives, Eric walks into the Brady pub, where Roman notes he's not looking too great. Sloan's dissolved without a trace, Roman, C.A. and believe she got the jump on E.J. Eric agrees it was shocking seeing E.J. on the ground. Roman also C.A. and believe Sloan swiped the baby, but as Eric says, hopeless people do hopeless effects. Jude was his son, and he lost him. Roman promises that L.L. get better, also suggests Eric move back into the cantina. And start over. Eric agrees, also leaves to make a mysterious stop. Days Roman is standing behind the bar, talking to Eric, who is leaning on it over in the Dee Mara manse, EJ is gleefully reading from in composition bashing Mayor Price to Little Jude. Paulina Price needs to step down as mayor, he says, or better yet, be forcefully removed. Chanel walks in looking unamused, is that a fact? She's not happy at how important of a kick he was getting out of going after Paulina. He claims it's on Chanel's behalf and risking her and his grandchild, which gets Chanel snapping back that she no way would have put her, her baby or herself in peril if she knew. She also points out, arms crossed, that Paulina fired EJ as DA, is this really about guarding your grandchild, or is this about you trying to get vengeance? He insists it's not, and Chanel tells him that all the tests say the baby is fine. But when EJ alludes to the options, if commodity is wrong, Chanel coldly tells him, I'm having the baby. They talk about changing Jude's name, and EJ insists that the baby is back where he belongs, with Nicole and me, his real parents. Daisy J and Chanel are standing in the Demera living room talking, while EJ looks off to the side, puzzled EJ's talking to Jude about the verity about his maternity and how it would bring him Nicole. Eric walks in, only to be hushed by EJ, who tells him Nicole is ent there. But Eric says he's there because he needs a counsel for a divorce with Sloan. Justin is dealing with the family matter and Belle and Sean are working on their marriage. He wants someone like EJ, who hates Sloan, the way they both do. EJ agrees to take him on and assures Eric there's a way around demanding Sloan to file for the divorce. They need to put a notice in the paper, make a good faith trouble to find her, and in a many weeks it ll all be over. Eric thanks him, he was ant sure EJ would take it on. EJ responds with we all earn a fresh launch, do ain't we? At Abe and Paulina's, she wakes from a agony where the radiation turned her into a fifty-bottom altitudinous woman and was rampaging through Salem. She has the same dream, just about every night. Abe suggests she talk to Marlena. She did ain't mean to put Chanel, Johnny, and the baby at threat and, he reminds her, their medical tests each turned out okay. Jackie Harry, James Reynolds, Days of Our Lives, set NBC Workrooms Burbank 11 14 23, copyright XJ Johnson, slash the studios dot com, 310 657 9661 occasion, hashtag 14877 u.s. air date 6 12 24. Paulina still worries commodity could change, and on top of that, she and Chanel are and in a good place now. She de no way forgive herself if anything happed to Chanel or the baby. Abe's phone rings, and it's his friend on the megacity council, Reuben, to advise Abe that there's a solicitation to recall Paulina as mayor. An association called the CCS, Concerned Citizens of Salem, is leading this, though they are ain't sure who's behind the group. Paulina's ready to find out right now. In the Horton Square, Leo's timber caddy remarks about how the spectator's jotting has gotten a lot sharper recently, when a shirtless man shows up asking for a favor he needs water. Leo gives it to him, while leering shamelessly, and before the man can run off, he asks for a date. The Joe thanks Leo for saving him from heatstroke, but I am not gay. Leo's dumbfounded. He's generally good at sousing this kind of thing out. The Joe says he's flattered, thanks him again, and runs off. Days Leo is sitting in the Horton Square talking to a shirtless Mark, who's standing Marlena's checking in with John and his flight on the phone in her office, also looks down at the tabernacle card. She doesn't get far before Johnny knocks and comes in. He's meeting Chanel at the sanitarium for an appointment, 
but he wanted to talk to his grandma about just my whole future. He's been offered a job by a patron in Los Angeles, but to do it, he d have to move now. Chanel does and indeed know about it and he's not sure he should tell her and go for it. He does and want her to feel like she has to make a immolation, especially with the baby coming. How do you suppose she's going to feel if she finds out you turned down the job and no way mentioned it? It's up to her to decide for herself, Marlena says, and Johnny agrees to talk to her. As for Marlena, she thinks he should consider the job, but selfishly, she d love to keep him in Salem. They talk a bit about Jude, Eric and EJ. Johnny feels awful for Eric and the family, but he's happy for his pater. And Nicole. Marlena says Jude is exactly where he's meant to be. Also, Johnny runs off for his appointment with Chanel. Shortly later, Leo bursts in, in hopeless need of help. My brain needs major fixing. And so does my heart. She tries getting relief of him, but he talks her into a corner until she notes he wouldn't go until she helps him. Leo's affrighted that he hit on a straight man, and he's going crazy, each, because of Dimitri's letter. I really opened myself up to Dimitri. I allowed. He was the one. But it was all a teradiddle. He lists off his rates, says he's got a lot going for him and Marlena agrees. Also why am I so unlovable? She prods him to talk about his parents and how bad his last visit to his mama was. Diana Colville is a veritably perturbed woman, Marlena tells him. She notes that his tone aggrandizing is a defense medium. He's astounded and tells her she's amazing. She says he supposes he's ridiculous and Leo, flattered, thanks her. I am also tortured and miserable 75% of the time. Do you suppose there's stopgap for me? De Chanel is in a sanitarium gown in a sanitarium test room, holding Johnny's hand as the croaker. Mark enters the room Chanel sitting in the test room at the sanitarium, when Johnny enters, and tells him about her intriguing converse with EJ. Johnny's ticked when she mentions EJ talking about options. She talks him out of charging into a fight with his pater. Also wonder where Kayla is. Before Johnny can tell Chanel about the new job, the new croaker. Walks in, the same man who Leo hit on. He sdr. Green, three e's, and when Chanel mentions Felicity, he tells her they re-siblings. They wax on about how great she is, also get to the examination. In the show's last many moments, Eric returns to the cantina. With a bag, also takes off his marriage ring and puts it in his fund. Roman asks if he's feeling better. Eric still feels like he's losing Jude each over again every time he sees the baby. Marlena tells Leo that everybody can be helped. He asks if she's willing to help him. Heaven help me, I will. He's rapturous, but she says if she helps him, he has to put in the work, else she's wasting her time. And she does it like that. But they part agreeing to start factual sessions. Over at Abe and Paulina's, the two are making calls to find out who the CCS is. Abe gets a communication about the source of the solicitation and shows his woman. I should be known back at his home, EJ's phone rings and gets the good news that the recall solicitation is going to the city council right now. Green assures Chanel and Johnny that everything looks good and the baby's twinkle sounded fine. They crack a many jokes about his name, Mark Green, like the croaker. From ER, and he leaves. Which gives Johnny the chance to ask a surprised Chanel how she d feel about leaving Salem.